Welcome back to the Norfolk farmhouse garden. Um, it's the last day of July and um, we've had a lot of heavy rain and wind so there's been quite a lot of casualties in the cottage garden. As you can see this is the vegetable garden and there's quite a few jobs to be done in here. Um, all the heavy rain has meant we've got masses of weed um, so we're going to need to spend a bit of time and pick over this this bit of the garden. We've been growing potatoes in here um, and as you can see the weeds have really taken hold in here. Lots of uh, dandelion and bindweed. I've actually put some hollyhocks in the uh, back of the vegetable garden this year because they just look so beautiful at the back of the borders. We've also got some courgettes in here that we've been growing. Um, and so we're going to need, they're not done particularly well, surprisingly. Um, but I think we need to harvest them quite little. Seem to have some sort of mildew or something on the on the plants, probably from all the rain. We've got quite a bit of harvesting to do because if you my poppy seeds are ready for harvesting, so I'm going to have quite a good uh, harvest this year. These are ready for, for putting into a bag now because they're nice and dry, and the poppy heads are full of seeds. They may, in fact, have already dropped out into the border, but that's okay because I like to to grow them. Another way to harvest them is to pick them when they're at this stage and then pop them into a paper bag, the heads. I listen, usually leave some of the stem on and then let them dry out in the paper bag and then all the seed ends up in the paper bag which is much more convenient and you can spread them where you want them to come up next year. I've got some more courgettes coming on in here. This is a sort of stripy green one. It's a much larger plant but it hasn't actually produced an awful lot of courgettes yet. Um, I'm hoping that in August we'll get more. I'm going to need to weed around here because the rain has meant there's a lot of weed. Another job we need to do this weekend is deadhead the daylilies. Um, the daylilies have been really good, but as you can see now, there's quite a few that need deadheading. This one, for example. So if we snip these off with my snips, then we'll get lots more flowers. Daylilies will keep flowering for months if you remember to deadhead them, but if you don't deadhead them, they'll very quickly finish. The flowers don't last very long, so they're not a good cut flower, but they are beautiful in the garden. Here's another plant that is at its very best this month, but it is starting to set seed. So I need to make a decision whether I'm going to collect the seed heads, which are these, and dry them so I've got more seed for next year, or whether I'm going to deadhead them to keep it flowering. This is a really good plant for Norfolk because of the grey foliage, it's very drought resistant and these pink flowers are just spectacular. The goldenrod or old man's beard as I think it's also known is coming into a uh, flower now and will be provide a massive splash of yellow in a week or two. It looks particularly good against the dark foliage of this copper beech behind. These roses flowered much earlier, a couple of months ago, and now they're forming the most fabulous hips. It's a rose of a goza that we have at the back of the border. Um, and it shouldn't deadhead this because it is grown as well as for the beautiful flowers. But these hips are just beautiful. This is my hot border. It's quite a late summer border. And it's full of uh, perennial daisies and most of the plants in this border are yellow. Quite often it's quite droughted this border, but this year because we've had a lot of rain, um, it's looking very good. It's not at its best yet, but it'll come into full flower in August. So we'll pop back and show you it when it's at its best. The buddleias have come into flower in the last week or two, and in fact I'm going to need to deadhead them soon. The butterflies love this, and on a sunny day it's covered in butterflies. There's a few about today, it's also very popular with the bees as you can see. So when these flowers are finished and they're completely brown, I'll just snip them off back here and then it'll continue to flower for longer. If you don't deadhead it, the flowering goes over fairly quickly. You can prolong the flowering by deadheading. We have a lot of daylilies in the garden and this is another beauty. Um, a lot of people don't like daylilies because the flowers don't last very long. Um, but I think they're great because they give you late summer colour. Um, and if you deadhead them, they will keep flowering for a long period. The rambling roses are just about coming to an end now. They've been spectacular, but the flowers are starting to go over and we will need to deadhead these and tidy them up for next year. 
Here's another late summer planting, another hot border, which will be at its best in a week or two. It also has a late aster in here, which has grown very prolifically. It's about up to six foot now, and looks particularly nice against our black shed. This will have small white flowers in September and October. The tansy also is doing well this year. Because of the rain, it's managing to stand very well. Yellow is definitely the predominant colour in late summer. So July and August in our garden, there is a lot of yellow. Earlier in the season, there isn't, it's more pinks and, pur and purples, but now we're definitely into the yellow season. And this rose here, which is one of my favourites, Graham Thomas, is particularly good in this border. I need to get in there and deadhead these, these two flowers, and then it should come back into flower again. It's a very good, reliable, repeat flower. Here's another of our beautiful rambling roses, uh, which is going to need a little bit of a haircut. It's got very big this year with all the rain and is actually obstructing some of our pathways. So once it's finished flowering, I'll be giving it quite a radical haircut. This zebra striped grass is very effective, planted with the tansy, um, and gives an almost tropical feel to this border. It's about six foot in height, and in fact the house is disappearing behind it, which gives us a very nice private patio. Again, we've got more of this... Um, old man's beard here which will be in full flower in a week or two and again gets to about five six foot i'm particularly pleased to see this has appeared i seeded some verbena in last year and i wasn't sure if i was going to get any and i have actually got a couple of plants come up as you can see if i can focus the bees love it i've got another of these beautiful plants here this is the white variety and again, it's a very good choice for Norfolk because of the steely grey uh, drought resistant foliage. And again, it's about to set seed. I think I am going to let these set seed because I would like more of them. Um, so I'll collect some seed and then I'll, in that process, I'll deadhead it and hopefully it'll keep flowering. I'm not actually sure what the name of this is. It eludes me at the moment. So if you know the name, please pop it in comments. This is an interesting little corner of our garden. Um, we've no, not actually done very much with this area because we were, we're planning to extend the house and build a kitchen here, but we haven't actually got round to it. But we have these beautiful Japanese anemones here which get to about five or six foot. They require very little care or attention other than uh, deadheading here. If you deadhead them regularly, they will keep flowering right through till October, November, even December if you have a mild winter. This is one of my favourite daisies. Again, it flowers July, August. Um, my dad grew it when I was a child and I've been growing it now for probably 40 years. Every house I've lived in, I've taken it with me and it always reminds me of my dad. We've been experimenting with less mowing this year just to see what happens. We do have quite a lot of weeds in our lawn and we decided maybe in this area we'd just give in to it this year. And it's very interesting to see what's coming up. We have a lot of these things in the lawn which do make it, the lawn quite unsightly if it's close mowed, but actually if you let it go more natural, it looks very pretty. We also have some lovely purple flowers that have appeared, which are very nice. And also some daisies over there where, although it's not what we're used to, um, a less tightly mowed lawn is, is definitely more friendly for the insects. And we've actually got some oxide daisies that are coming up in the lawn as well, which I had no idea were there. They're just coming up at the edges. Also got some ground elder which has appeared, so I'll need to get on top of that. This is a gorgeous plant at this time of year. It's a variety of purple loose strife. And again, it's something I've been growing for many years. The bees love it. Again, it flowers July, August. Um, there are quite a few different varieties. This is quite a short one, but the color is spectacular. It looks particularly nice, underplanted with the rose above the, below the roses. Also, we've got some allium heads here, which look very good with it. Here's another plant that the bees love. I'm not actually sure what this plant is. I bought it on a gardening fair and I can't remember, but if, so if you know, please do let us know. The bees absolutely love it. It's covered in bees today. Everywhere you look, there's a bee. It's got very unusual foliage and it flowers like this, again, July and August. 
Um, if you deadhead it, it, you may get a second flush in September on it. Whoops, I'm getting actually <laughs> flown into by the bees. It looks really lovely with this pink rose. The colours just work beautifully. The garden is just alive with bees today, even though it's not particularly sunny. This is a paved area next to an old swimming pool. The swimming pool is about 40 years old and actually we don't use it anymore. It was here when we bought the house. Um, and we all, in previous years we've always weeded it, but this year we've left it to go wild and it's absolutely full of wildflowers, which is really unusual. Um, we are planning to fill the swimming pool in and hopefully have a nice greenhouse here in years to come. We've got another of these plants here, a slightly paler one. And again, same thing, it's covered in bees. Oh, we've got some baby birds of prey above us, as you can probably hear. But this is one of the real showstoppers at this time of year. It gets to about six foot with these incredible purple spikes on it. And it's very, very bee friendly. Oh yeah, I'm trying to focus in on the bees, but it's quite difficult. They're moving so much. We've had a bit of a catastrophe here. We had strong rain and wind yesterday and this beautiful climbing roses have actually fallen off the rose arch. So that's going to need a little bit of attention. I think we may just leave them for now because getting them back up is going to be problematic. But once we give them a hard cut back, once they finish flowering, we'll be able to train them back onto the rose arch, which is where they should be up there. Oh, and this has to be one of my favourite plants in the garden. It's a beautiful, large lavender, English lavender. We have about three bushes planted on the end of this rose arch. And the scent is just incredible. They're just coming into flower. And again, the bees are buzzing around them. They're just going to get better and better over the next couple of weeks. I love this colour combination here of the purple lavender. And then this incredible cerise rose absolutely beautiful. The rose isn't scented but the colour is just incredible and the scent from the lavender is beautiful. Another of our incredible rambling roses on the rose arch because we've had so much rain this year the roses have done really well and then the wind yesterday the weight of the roses has brought it over but they're just beautiful. This is another plant that is at its best late July and August um, it's actually a wildflower, known as a killia, I think. And there's lots of varieties you can buy in the garden centres in different colours. Um, I think I did originally plant it in here, but it just seems to have been self-seeding everywhere. I'm hoping this year to get this actually into the meadow. It's very insect friendly, as you can see. There's bugs on it, little beetle here. And it, it will naturalise into the meadow, so I'm very hopeful that I'll be able to get it into the grass area. This is one of my wild borders that borders the meadow. It's mainly roses and achillea and other wildflowers, geranium. I've got a teasel coming up there um, and I'm hoping that lots of these will seed into the meadow. But at the moment the meadow is predominantly grass. It's been a really good year for these honeysuckles. I think all the rain earlier in spring has really helped them and it's the best, best that they've ever been. They're covered in flower and they've put lots of growth on. The scent is just beautiful. I think we'll finish up with this lovely old apple tree in the orchard. Ten years ago when we bought the house we trained this, planted this rose at the base of it um, and we probably didn't look after it as well as we should so it has taken quite a few years to get established but now it's just beautiful. It's growing through the oak, through the apple tree and the flowers are so pretty. I think it was met probably just one a, a, a cutting or root cutting off one of the other roses on the pergola. Don't think it's scented, but the colour's very, very pretty. And it copes very well with growing through an apple tree, which a lot of roses don't. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? We're in the meadow now. Walking around the garden with you, I've realised how much weeding there is for me to do and how much deadheading. So I'm off to do some now. Thank you for joining me on my tour of my garden in late July. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them. And uh, if you enjoyed watching our videos, please hit subscribe. Bye for now.